friends and welcome back. This is Jenny from Polly's Paper Studio. I do realize that it is early for Easter projects. However, I have decided today that I am no longer participating in winter, so I am moving right on into spring. This card is created with the new Cottontail collection from Authentic Paper. There is a great combination of patterned papers here with vintage images that coordinate. They also have a die cut sheet and I've used this for some of my focal images. So I created this card and earlier I made this one as well with that very sweet bunny image and lots of spring colors and these beautiful holiday inspiration. So stick with me and we will make this card together. The base of this card is so easy, you guys. You just need to have one 12 by 12 sheet of 65 pound weight cardstock. I cut mine into two pieces that are six inches wide. My first one I left at 12 inches and then I scored it at six so that I could fold it in half. And then I added my double-sided adhesive tape to just one side. My remaining portion is still going to be six inches wide, but this time I've cut it to be only 11 inches long. So my first score line is at six again, and then I'm going to score it eight and a half, and then that will give me two equal portions of two and a half inches so that when it's folded up, it will leave that great step in the front. I've taken the backing off of that tape now and I'm going to connect these two sections for the front of the card you want the smaller step and for the back you'll want the full six by six inch portion. So I just line that up there at the score line and it will be perfectly nice and level. So here is your card base and You've got a six inch square basically, and you'll want to consider adding a portion for a sentiment to be added that is not part of the front of the card because I think many people will use these to add to their holiday decor. So if you want to write a sentiment and have it more uh, private and not part of your display, I would consider adding that sentiment here to the inside of the card and go ahead and use the coordinating pattern papers for that so that it has a nice consistent look and that way you can write all of your sweet nothings inside and then it won't show when the card is displayed. I chose this beautiful Tiffany blue cardstock to bring out a little of the blue that is in the carrot detail so that would kind of all tie in together. And I'm going to use that patterned paper on top with the eighth of an inch border all the way around. And I'm picking the more busy pattern for the background so that when we lay on the next set it will show plenty of that pattern. It won't get lost underneath the layer. So this is just the opposite side of that check and I'm still using the double-sided adhesive tape. I don't want to add any spacers for this portion because it will cause the card not to fold correctly. And I'm just going to alternate those patterns with the tones and the scale of the print. I'll add that carrot pattern to the center and it will have a cute border of that pink check. Those colors are so festive and nice for the holiday. I can add this now to the back of the card. And by back, I mean I'm adding it to the back portion of the front of the card so that um, it will be a background for the next layer. So this still has that same border of the white card stack. And all of these additional layers makes the card so sturdy and nice and heavy. So it will definitely keep its shape. So now what you've got is the background with the carrot pattern. I want to add some paper to the folded portion for the front. I'm gonna continue to use that blue 
cardstock, but switch out the pattern this time for a stripe. This stripe works so well to emphasize the different elements to this card, so it definitely looks like a different portion that is the folded section, and that will fold in there just like that so that it will have a nice finish on the inside as well. And now we can move to this portion. I'm going to use that same layering that's just going to go on exactly how the inside piece did. Now I've got a portion of a die cut doily. This is the French pastry die from Cherryland Designs and this is cut from crisp white cardstock so that it is definitely a break between all the busy patterns. I cut it in half just lining it up on my guillotine slicer with the same portion of the scallop edge so that I knew it would be nice and straight and I'm adding this over to the side and you'll see why in just a moment that doily top is only coming as far as the pattern paper so that I can take advantage of the cardstock that's already there. Now I've got a couple of extra elements that I want to add. These were part of a cut apart journal card and I just fussy cut around that for the first portion I want to add this with just the double sided adhesive so that it will have a nice contact with the card base. I put adhesive only about halfway up. I want to make sure that I don't go over the top of that folded portion so that I won't accidentally seal this card closed. So now you can see that it will pop up and be higher than the top of the fold. I've got this really lovely vintage image that was part of the die cut sheet. I clipped that out and then I carefully clipped around it to make sure that there wasn't any of those picky pieces that hold the die cut into the page. And I've put some foam spacers on the back. I'm going to cover the sentiment because I have another one that I want to add. So this will go right here and I'm just being careful to keep this straight. Here's another element from that die cut sheet. This happy spring banner works so well with the checkered pattern in the background. I've got this on spacers as well but remember that we put this first element on a spacer so what I've done is I've added a single layer where it will be supported on the image and then anything that hangs off will get a second layer of adhesive foam so that it will lay flat and I'll add this just over top of that image a little bit hanging off the side. I'm pressing that into place so that I have a good contact. I've got a few more elements just for the bottom of the card. I'm going to attach some vintage but that will be the front. Now when it closes you can see the portion of that egg image will stick up from that and I have arranged my flowers so that I'm working around that. I don't want this egg to get stuck, cause this not to open properly. So what I've got here is some flowers. This is a mix from 49 and Market. There's some little birdie craft buds here and then this magnolia is from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I just picked these tones because I thought they went well with this background um, carrot pattern. It has a lot of the spring colors in it. I left a little portion of this pink flower without glue because I want to come in and add my bow. This is a pink wrinkle ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. This is a very simple loopy bow and I just want to tuck it right under that pink flower. That will fill in that corner very nicely and add some texture as well. Last but not least I have a few charms here that are holiday inspired. A little carrot and a bunny 
and I've just tied these together before I add them because I know the spacing that I want between these charms and I know that I want to see exactly where it falls before I stick it down. I can hold those charms in place. And then lay that string right in there. Now you know that they're going to be at the um, correct spacing that you want them. Come in and trim your string now. It will be easier than after you attach your button. So here's the last detail I have. It is a vintage button again, tied with more string. Now just cover those tails with the button. And that is all for my fancy fold Easter greeting card created with the brand new Cottontail collection from Authentique Paper. I will drop a link in the description for this collection. You can check it out at Authentique Papers as well as links to our social media sites. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, leave me a comment, and if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!